This is uh, the libs of TikTok Chaya Rychek uh, interview with Taylor Lorenz. We're not going to watch the full interview because I think that would be tediously long, but there are some segments that we would like to address here. Starting with this one. If you eradicate transgenderism, which I believe you suggested in a post today. No, I never suggested that. Oh, okay. You re <laughs> I never suggested that. <laughs> she did, actually, but whatever. Posted a post that was advocating for that. What would happen to the people that have already medically, socially, completely transitioned and are leading happy lives? What would happen to them? I mean, what's your plan? Well, that doesn't exist, you see, because uh, there are no actual trans people out there that are happy, you know. People who try to find happiness there will only find emptiness and, you know, all that stuff. So that doesn't actually exist. For, for that. If transgender no, honestly, uh, that was my sarcastic response to this, but it was actually a better and more coherent response than what you're going to get, as you'll see in a moment. Transgenderism doesn't exist, which it seems like you are that's what you believe. What happens to all the people living <laughs> happy lives as trans people? Well, it, first of all, the whole trans is it's based on a lie. You can't change your you can't change your gender. OK, but so they could they could go live their 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 life. I mean, I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. Sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house. I never said that. So you're totally OK with people being. <laughs> I love that, that. I love this response of like, I never said that. It's like, yeah, but like the stuff you have said leads one to those conclusions, like inexorably and inescapably. It's like if someone's like, you know, I think that what we ought to do with all this riffraff is put them up against a wall, put them up against a wall. That'll solve the problem. So you're saying like you want to shoot them? I never said that. I never said that. Like, yeah, you technically didn't say exactly those words, but you pretty strongly implied it. Trans, just not as long as they're in public. No, I never said that. They. I never said that either. I never said that. I never said that. Did I say that? I never said that. 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 Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You just said it. We heard you say it. You didn't say those exact words, but that doesn't mean you didn't say that, okay? Like, it's not that hard. Like, do you understand the concept of implications? Do you understand the concept of subtext? Do you understand the concept of, like, nuance and shit? Probably not, right? Okay. The whole thing is based off of a lie, and I think- You know, if your big problem in society is things that are based off of lies, then, I don't know, maybe go after- MAGA, maybe go after um, religion, maybe go after QAnon, maybe go after anti-vaxxers, maybe go after all these anti-science morons that have cropped up in the last few years. Maybe go after some of those people since they're so virulently anti-truth. But no, instead you side with all those people and you go against trans people because that's apparently the lie. Even if Gender transition was a lie. It would be the most harmless of fucking lies compared to any of the stuff I just listed. That this lie cannot be mainstream in our in our society. It's just it's a lie. And what harm is it causing? Do you believe? Um, I like the truth. I like truth. No, you don't. Right, but I'm saying, what what's the what's the harm of people expressing their gender identity differently than you believe <coughs> it to be? What what harm are they causing? Um, like I said, we are a a um, a nation of truth, and I I'm, I'm, I seek the truth. But that's but I'm asking about the harm. What's the harm? You might believe it to be false, but what's the, the harm, harm is that there's a lie that is very mainstream and is being embedded into every institution. I find it kind of incredible that a person who has devoted so much of their time, so much of their energy, so much of their resources into this crusade against trans people cannot answer extraordinarily simple questions about what they believe. I, as a person who 100% does not believe any of this stuff, could come up with some answers to these questions. Like, if I was in her position, I could answer these things. She can't. She literally cannot do it. 
all she can do is repeat the same tired talking point of, well, it's a lie. It's a lie, and I like the truth, and uh, I don't like lies, you know? So we can't have lies, you know? Because if it's a lie, then it's a lie, and we got to have the truth because this is a nation of, of truth. It's like, have you ever heard something more empty-headed and prattling than that? I struggle to think of a time when I have. Material harm is, aside from it's maybe something that you disagree with, as in your version of the truth is different than their version of the truth, what is the material harm of them living their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm, necessarily. So there's no harm? I didn't say that. If you <laughs> Not everything that's wrong is there, like, a material harm, necessarily. Okay, so there is no material harm? I didn't say that. It's like, well, once again, you kind of implied it pretty strongly. Like, the fact that you can't cite what it is seems to sort of suggest that there isn't anything. That would be the extrapolation my little brain would make. But, of course, I don't have a big Chaya Rychek libs a TikTok brain. I just got a little tiny amazing atheist brain like this big. So, I guess I don't get it. I guess I'm just too... Uh, too stupid to understand. Hey, if you like this clip, you might like the full stream, which I do every Sunday, more or less, over on the Pessimist Productions Patreon, link down below. Thank you kindly. Would you say that you're a free speech supporter? Yeah. So how do you square the sort of being this free speech supporter with wanting to ban literature? What kind of literature? Any kind of literature. I mean, I, I would think what that- What kind of literature am I trying to ban? Oh, I thought you were just trying to say you're that you, have, I mean, you've made an effort to get books removed from schools. What kind of books? Books t dealing with LGBTQ people and sexual no, that's education. that's not what I thought. Oh, so you're not trying to get any books banned from schools? Uh, we noticing a fucking response here, like a tokenistic response that just is automatic no matter what? That's not what it said. That's not what it said. That's not what it said. That's not what I said. It's like, you're in an interview right now, okay? So you're free to now say what you mean. Instead of just constantly being like, that's not what I said, say what you're going to say. Like, put forth your actual position then. Like, if if the interviewer asks you a question and you're like, that's not how, that's not what I said, follow that up by saying the thing that you actually think. That way people can know, like, oh, okay, that's what she thinks. But it says, it's just not what I said. It's not what I said. And then nothing. Just like, that's not what I said. Full stop. That's the whole counter argument. I didn't say that. I only, you know, heavily implied it. Uh, that's not what I said either. Okay, why don't you explain yeah, yeah. to me what, how you're thinking about this? You just accused me of wanting to ban books. What kind of books am I trying to ban? Uh, you tell me. I'm not trying to ban anything. But you're not trying to... Yes, you, yeah, you are, though. <laughs> you you are. I don't understand. This conversation is the most frustrating thing I've ever experienced in my life. So you believe in freedom of speech? Yeah. Well, why are you trying to ban books? Well, what, what books am I trying to ban? LGBTQ books? No. -uh. Okay, well, what books are you trying to ban? I'm not trying to ban no books. But then you are trying to ban books, as we've all plainly see you do, so... Huh? <laughs> is this just like a, a bad attempt at a Jedi mind trick? I haven't tried to ban any books. And you're just hoping that <laughs> she'll just be like, oh, okay. You ban any books. Who said I'm trying to ban books? Are you trying to remove books from libraries? From public school libraries. Okay. This is like the Patrick meme. <laughs> this is like, you agree that this is a book, right? Yeah. You want this book banned from a library, right? Yeah. Therefore, it stands to reason that you want to ban books, right? No, I never said that. <laughs> yes, you did. You just did. Okay. <laughs> How did you um, get connected with Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma, and how many times have you been to that state? Um, I was there once. They have, unfortunately, a lot of wokeness in their red state. 
and uh, uh, I'm trying to help. How'd you originally sort of, what, how'd Oklahoma get on your radar as opposed to others? Because I started posting about the stuff going on in schools there. Um, you know, like I do across the country, and then you know, people and you know, people were very upset that this was happening in their schools. So, a woman who has been to Oklahoma once in her entire life has been appointed to like a an important board in Oklahoma to oversee like school libraries in Oklahoma, and she's literally been there once in her entire life. And she was basically appointed for purely political reasons just because some weird Republican higher-ups in that state liked her Twitter page. Like, yeah, we should appoint her. She knows what's... Like, didn't even appoint, like, a local person. Didn't appoint someone who actually has any sort of understanding of, like, the school library system or anything like that. Just appointed this popular airhead from Twitter and said, oh, yeah, yeah she knows. She knows what's what. And she clearly doesn't. She clearly doesn't know a goddamn thing. She doesn't know her ass from a hole in the ground. She knows fucking nothing. And that's been made perfectly clear in each and every one of these clips. She has no ability to even defend her position. And I'm not saying, by the way, that her position is even indefensible. Like... If you were to want to be a right-wing grift, like if Ben Shapiro was the one in this position, he could defend this. He could come up with some line of bullshit. It would still be nonsense. It'd still be critiquable. It'd still be debatable. But at least it would be something. She has nothing. Issue after issue, question after question. It's just non-answer, non-answer, non-answer. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Vacuous, empty, prattling. Devoid of reason, devoid of merit, devoid of anything. No, TJ, her position is indefensible. Well, then you have no creative imagination because any position is defensible if you actually have any, like, rhetorical skill whatsoever. There were some months over the past three years that there were more illegals coming into our border than children being born in the U.S. This is a complete lie. Um, this is only if you take the total number of everybody who tried to cross and got caught and add that in. So there's never been a point in American history where successful border crossings surpassed, you know, U.S. birth rate. Not even close. Is that not, does that not look like they're trying to replace us? I guess um, sort of imagine America as a, a melting pot. Isn't that sort of what America was founded on? They're, they're actually bringing in more people than are actually being born. So I guess if you, it sounds like you sort of do ascribe to this theory of the Great Replacement. Um, how does that make you feel? I just look at feel? the facts and the numbers. Well, so, I mean, just let's... Well, then you're just wrong about the facts and the numbers because, like I said, that's never actually happened. There's no citation you could possibly summon up that would um, demonstrate that whatsoever. Give a corollary, right? A lot of Jewish people fled, you know, Europe came over here also as immigrants. Um, and there's a lot of criticism. She's bringing up the Jewish thing because uh, Chaya Rychek is Jewish. Towards Jewish people in those movements, in those far right movements. So I'm just wondering as a Jewish woman, sort of how you feel about that and your role in cultivating this fan base that might think of you as an as a as a minority or an outsider. Uh, not all cultures are equal. It's not what was asked, but okay. <laughs> not all cultures are equal. I mean, like, even if that's true, which I mean, I can grant you that honestly, because cultures are different. Cultures can be compared and contrasted in terms of their moral and, you know, values and all that stuff. I think what was being asked there was not like, is Jewish culture superior to like Latin American culture? That wasn't the question. The question was, how does it feel to sidle up to all of these racist bigots who probably will end up throwing you in a fucking concentration camp one day if they ever get to power? Like, I think that was the question kind of being asked there. Like, how does it feel cozying up to people who would just as easily despise you for being Jewish? And the answer is, well, you know, some cultures are superior to others, which is not an answer. 
learns about educational materials and books, library books and things, um, especially. They're importing people who want to destroy America and who, who. No one's being imported. People choose to immigrate on their own. Like no one is being like sent here by some other nefarious force. And it's kind of weird she would say that they were because typically when I have seen right-wing memes that talk about some nefarious force importing immigrants into this country, it's Jews. That's the that's their primary culprit for that shit. Every time I have seen a right-wing meme or a right-wing talking point that says that there are illegals being pumped into this country by some nefarious outside force. That nefarious outside force is invariably Jews, like you. This is fire you're playing with, whether you realize it or not. Want to who come here and and do not stand for what America stands for. So, and I think, and we see it. There's time after time after time after time. They come in. They're destroying our cities. They bring crime with them. I mean, if you actually look at the statistics on illegal immigrants, you'll see that illegal immigrants are less criminal than natural born citizens. I mean, this has been shown time and time again. So once again, this is just another instance where the data disagrees with you and you're just going on your gut feeling. And they, they are bringing them in to replace us. And um, yeah, I think people from, from various countries, you know, they, they're all different. Wow, they are, huh? Very fascinating. All right, I think I, my next clip might be the last one we're going to play. This one I didn't find a cutout for, but this is a particular minute marker. And this is an instance where I think that Taylor Lorenz does a pretty piss poor job at pushing back against the point. So this is kind of a more important thing, I think, than the rest. Yeah, I guess I feel... Because we need to put this into context. Yeah. Well, we won't know the context, of course, because we don't know the context of how those things are being taught. Oh, so we could give kids, like, pictures of gay sex as long as it's in the proper context? I don't know. I mean, it's up to the educator to determine, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious, Kaya, why... Welcome to gay sex class. Why you class. Kind of focus so much about the LGBT? You keep mentioning like, gay sex, but you don't why? mention straight sex. I don't think there's ever been an instance in all of American educational history where children have been presented an image of gay sex as part of the educational curriculum. I'm pretty sure that's never happened. I guess, you know, if someone has evidence to the contrary, correct me if I'm wrong. Why is there such a focus on the LGBTQ world? Oh, and I don't want pictures of sex in school, any pictures. So you don't think children should receive any sort of sexual education, straight or gay? I said I don't want pictures of sex in school. But you think that they should receive picture-free sex education. I uh, know. I think we discussed this earlier. Okay. Yeah. There's no pinning her down because she just denies everything. Even if it's, even if the thing she just said and the thing she just denied saying are the same thing. Oh, well, you know, it's just like, she's not even slippery. She's just stupid. Like, I don't even think this is a tactic. I think this is just like, she just denies everything. No matter how, what you try, like you try to pin her down on a position and it's just not there. I never said that. 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 Never said that. Never said that. I'm curious kind of how you're thinking, you know, when you think about your, the way that you put out content and the way that you think about growing your media empire. Here, this is the, a blow job. Ah, uh, this is a blow job. Look, look at the blow job. Like what? What? I don't know what book this is from. Gender queer. Okay. So should this picture of a blowjob be in elementary schools? I mean, apparently it should be on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, if you look at this picture right here and you think to yourself, ah, yes, pornography then like you need to go to like hentai foundry or somewhere like that and type in blowjob and look at what actual drawn blowjob pornography looks like. So I'm pretty sure that that book has not been in elementary schools, but I was curious about all the hubbub about this book. So I downloaded it on my uh, Apple smartphone 
iPhone and I went through the book. And if that book is in fact pornography, I have to say it is the worst fucking pornography ever made. It is like 150 pages of people talking about their feelings. And then there's like two panels of a fucking not very sexually presented blowjob. Like not eroticized is what I'm saying. Like obviously a blowjob is inherently sexual, but there's like non eroticized imagery of a character receiving a blowjob. That character, by the way, I believe in that scene becomes immediately uncomfortable and says like, let's not do this. I don't, it's making me feel weird. So, and this is a person's memoir, by the way. So this is a real life person recounting their actual life in the form of a graphic novel memoir, 99.9% .9 of which contains no sexual content whatsoever, but then there happens to be two panels where a blowjob is occurring. And it's like, oh my God, it's porn. It's porn. This would be like taking a fucking random sex scene from part of an R-rated movie and saying, look, it's pornography. Look at that pornography right there in America's movie theaters. And like, it's just goofy shit. Cause like, that's not porn. Being in elementary school? I have no idea the context. I have no so idea. So, in what context. context should it, is it okay if it would be? I have school? absolutely no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I would not. I I don't know, Kaya, because I haven't seen the rest of that book. I don't know what's in there. I don't but know the you, context. But there well, I have seen the rest of the book, and you know what's in there? A lot of like soul searching, emotional, heart wrenching. Who am I? Coming of age bullshit. Typical growing up shit. That's what's in there. 150 some odd pages of feet talking about feelings and stuff. Like that's, that's what it is. And then there's two panels where there's a fucking blow job. And these people are just like, Oh my God, it's porn. It's porn. It's porn. There's way more sexually explicit stuff in the Bible, by the way, which I'm pretty sure they're okay with being in school libraries. There's way more violent stuff in the Bible. There's way more immoral stuff in the Bible. And no one has a problem with that. Well, I do, but you know what I mean? Like so many of the books that I was assigned to read in school, like had, like there's lesbian sex in the diary of Anne Frank. You know, there's not direct lesbian sex, but there's lesbian sexual fantasies expressed in the diary of Anne Frank. And, um, you know, once again, you have someone's personal memoir and this, in this case of a historically important person, and they're still like, oh my God, we should, and, and I wonder as a Jewish woman, if she would say that those scenes should be excised or if that book should be taken out of school libraries. I'm curious about that. I'd never get an answer. She would just say, I didn't say that. I never said that. Well, you know, do you think that it's appropriate for these, you know, lesbian fantasies to be broadcast to these kids? They're impressionable children. Well, I didn't say that. So you think that the Diary of Anne Frank should be removed from the school? I, I didn't say that. Oh, my God. Well, since you're not saying anything about anything, I guess no one needs to pay attention to you then. Because apparently you have no opinions. Was that book actually in schools uh, and be accessed by children? Because I remember that this coming up and I couldn't find anything about that being the case. Well, let's just do a little research. Let's find out if it's actually been in school libraries. And if so, has it been in elementary school libraries? Which I think is a more important question. Gender Queer, a memoir by Maya Kobabi or Kobabe was removed from general circulation at two high schools within the Pinellas County School District in Florida, specifically Lakewood and Dunedin High Schools. The decision to remove the books was based on concerns regarding its content, which includes graphic, illustrated, sexual nature deemed not age appropriate for all high school students. So that's at a high school level. There is no verified information indicating that Gender Queer, a memoir, has been officially stocked in elementary school libraries. The discussions and controversies surrounding the book have primarily involved its presence in middle and high school libraries. The claims often address concerns about the book's content being age appropriate for those education levels. So I cannot find a single example of Gender Queer, a memoir, being stocked in elementary school libraries. 
Whether or not it's appropriate for middle school libraries, I don't know. I think that's debatable. High school libraries, I think absolutely it's fine. Um, there is another book called It Feels Good to Be Yourself that has been stocked in elementary school libraries that's been controversial. The book is presented as an optional reading selection and aims to explain the concepts such as sex assigned at birth, intersex, gender identity, gender expression, cisgender, transgender, and non-binary to readers, including uh, making it intended for age, children ages four to eight. So if that book contains some sort of graphic materials, then maybe that would be inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, I read Carrie in, from the high school library. I read uh, Stephen King's It for the first time in the high school library. I read um, the uh, Lords of Chaos for the first time from the high school library. I've read all kinds. I mean, when I was in high school, I read a ton of books from the high school library that contained material far stronger in nature than the stuff featured in gender queer. So it strikes me as very, very strange that all of a sudden this material is, just, oh, my God, it's pornography. It's horrible. And it's not. It's just silly. Let's supplement that Chaya Raichek segment a little bit. I... I'm going to take the position of a transphobe. I am virulently transphobic, okay? I want you to ask me questions as a transphobe. And so I can respond how I would respond if I were in her right-wing grifty position. Just to show how it could have been done better. What harm comes from the trans movement? Well, look, I mean, I think it's caused mass confusion. I mean, so many people now are gender confused, questioning their gender identity. And so many people are uh, that are not diagnosed gender dysphoria are out there now questioning their gender, questioning who they are as people. And we don't need that sort of mass confusion. There's enough things to be confused about already in this country. Do we really need to fall down the rabbit hole of confusion about something as simple as gender. There was none of this gender confusion in the 1950s. There was none of this gender confusion in the 1920s. There was none of this gender confusion in 1776 when our great founders established this country. George Washington wasn't going around wearing a dress and saying, call me Georgina. What about the countless medical journals that say gender is a social construct with no basis uh, to a person's biology? Well, I mean, uh, gender is a social construct because there is no such thing as gender. The only thing there is is biological sex. And we have specific roles for people based on their biological sex that are designed by our traditions, by our culture, to perfectly fit the tendencies and the strengths and weaknesses of those sexes. And to try to overturn that is really just an attempt of people who are dissatisfied with their sexual assignment to uh, find some sort of other path forward. But unfortunately, that drastically affects uh, social cohesion. I mean, I don't think anyone would deny that a unified country is better than a divided country. And it seems to me that all of this gender confusion has been designed to divide us as a people. And therefore, we need to roundly reject it. Now, maybe there are things we could do to update the roles of the sexes in society. And that's something we should look into because obviously there are people who feel as though there are limitations there. But I think to jump to this hyper uh, conclusion of we need to you know, dress men as women and women as men and people just get to choose their gender now. I think that that's done nothing good for this country. It has led to mass confusion and division. And unfortunately, that's something that we can ill afford as we have the forces of Russia and China breathing down our, our necks. And I think that this is nothing more than a plot by the elite to uh, control thought by dividing the people. Explain how transphobes are not projecting their insecurities on the trans people and legitimately disturbed by their existence and how. 
look, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I am disturbed by the existence of these trans people um, because I think that the trans movement, what it really represents is a system that has been put in place to divide people against one another, to divide the sexes against one another, to create mass confusion about personal identity, and to get people navel-gazing instead of contributing to the greater good. Everyone is only concerned with what's good for them. And so if a father of three children all of a sudden decides he's their mother, then that's going to cause harm to those kids. That's going to cause harm to that relationship that he has with his partner. That's going to cause uh, problems at his work. And then it causes all sorts of social ills. And it's designed to destabilize these social institutions that have taken America this far. And when you start to undermine those great social institutions, what you end up with is the chaos and confusion and uh, disarray that you see today. And that's why America's place is falling in the world. And that's why we as a people have become so vitriolic and at each other's throats. What about societies whose concept of what a man and woman is are completely different from ours? Well, I'd like you to cite me such a society. I mean, I think that in every society, it's known that if you have a penis, you're a man. If you have a vagina, you're a woman. And there's not much confusion about this in the majority of the world. I think only in American society, uh, modern-day American society, modern-day Western societies, has this confusion arisen. And you can point to some obscure things like uh, – Indian tribes who maybe, you know, allotted for a third supposed gender identity, but that's a rather obscure example. You know, the, the individual roles of the genders or the sexes might be different from culture to culture, but that doesn't mean that they're an entirely different thing. Do you have empirical evidence to support your position? Well, I mean, look at the data that shows that we're seeing an increasing number of trans people. If this was a naturally occurring thing, then we wouldn't see an increase suddenly. I think that it's, there's a tremendous amount of evidence that this is nothing more than a social contagion. And of course, the, you know, the trans activists will respond that that's simply because you know, trans people are uh, more accepted now. Therefore, people are more willing to transition but I think that that's an absurd notion because, I mean, we've seen that this trans movement started uh, in the, uh, the 1930s, the 1940s, 50s. Um, one of the most famous examples of uh, a trans identifying person was in like the uh, aftermath of World War II. I forget the name of that individual, but um, it sh you know, th it's shown that there has been acceptance of this in our society for far too long. I mean, initially there was no rejection of trans identities. It was just a thought of, oh, well, I guess that's something that human beings are capable of. You know, we can change our sex now if we, if we so choose. And very few people chose to do it, but very few people were transphobic about it because it wasn't a social movement at that time. It was just an, an you know, a scientific curiosity. And uh, unfortunately now it's become a social movement and it's like, unless you're trans, you're just not cool in the eyes of the youth anymore. And that has become a serious issue because it's, it's pushing people into trans ideology. As a transphobe, why do you sound intelligent? Well, it's because I'm not actually a transphobe. I am a person of reasonable intelligence who is showing transphobes that they could actually come up with rhetoric that sounds halfway decent if they weren't recorded. <laughs> I mean, everything I just said is absolute bullshit, but... Like, I'm just trying to show that there are answers to these questions that sound at least on a very superficial level reasonable, at least more reasonable than just like, I never said that. I never said that. I never said that. Oh my God, I never said that.